Welcome to Chalk Walks, case number two. Okay, our second case is a 15-year-old male castrated whippet who weighs about 14 kilograms, and he's had a one-day history of acute respiratory distress and diarrhea. His, uh, the referring veterinarian had used treatments of lactated ringers, meloxicam, and ceftifur, meloxicam being a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that has uh, um, relatively uh, more uh, protective of, of gastric uh, mucosa than, say, aspirin, but is still, at high doses, can have uh, lead to ulceration. And um, ceftifur, third-generation cephalosporin. This uh, treatment was only employed for a couple of days before the dog was referred uh, uh, into um, a university setting. Uh, at that time, they had a differential diagnosis of infectious tracheitis uh, with possible second, secondary bacterial pneumonia. And so this is a situation where you're facing um, the need to treat the animal without a specific uh, diagnosis, uh, at least in terms of the bacterial culture. Bacterial cultures were conducted, but the dog is in very severe uh, condition. And so uh, this animal was hospitalized and, and treated with uh, uh, lactated ringers at 55 milliliters per hour while being placed in an oxygen cage. Um, let's take a look at the fluid therapy. This uh, dog at this rate would, would have been treated with about 1.3 liters, and that turns out to be 92 milliliters per kilogram. I think unless you're absolutely sure an animal like this does not have congestive heart failure, uh, this dog did not have any murmurs to make them suspicious of this, so they were a little uh, more aggressive with the fluid therapy, where a maintenance rate... Um, would normally be uh, somewhere around 50 milliliters per kilogram. And uh, obviously this, they consider this dog to be somewhat dehydrated, somewhere in the 4 to 5% range. And that, that, that would be about 100 mils per kilogram if that's what he was given. Um, so he's a little under that. The antimicrobial choice here is, is interesting because they uh, obviously feel like this animal is very serious. It's an old animal, uh, probably uh, is uh, affected by, if you play the odds, um, about a third of the cases can be um, staph, intermediates. And then there's the possibility about equal amounts, 10 to 15 percent, can be either Pseudomonas or E. coli. So we have basically a gram positive, and we have gram negatives. So we look. We this is a situation where we use what is called uh, four quadrant therapy, in this case because it's of the upper or the lower respiratory tree, we're probably not so concerned about the anaerobe part of that. So we're looking for gram-positive uh, control. This would be covered by ampicillin and uh, with the potentiator Solbactam. This, is an IV, this was given uh, IV in the hospital. And has a better spectrum. It is sidle, that combination, but it has a better spectrum uh, towards the gram-positive side. And, and rifloxacin, which is a fluoroquinolone that has uh, generally a very good spectrum towards gram-negative. Now, the combination of these two um, provides synergistic uh, coverage. Some of the bacteria that are gram-negative that might not be sensitive to enrofloxacin Ampicillin can possibly poke holes in their cell membrane. And so when we use ampicillin, or I should say a beta-lactam beta 
or a cephalosporin and either a quinolone like this or an aminoglycoside, we can see synergy and broad spectrum at the same time, and it's a, it's a cytal combination. Now, I didn't bring along what the dosage that was used in this dog, but as it, you can take a look at the dosages in, um, say, a formulary, and a dog, you would start at about 5 milligram per kilogram once a day, um, but you can go all the way up to 20 milligrams per kilogram. And why would you go to 20? You might go to 20 in order to um, address a more resistant bug uh, and hopefully still take advantage of the quinolones activity against that grand negative. This might be necessary if they culture Pseudomonas. So, and then the dog was given an acetylcysteine IV and uh, this drug is, an, an, is a reducing agent that helps to break down mucus. Uh, sometimes it's given by nebulization, but in this case it was given IV to the animal. So we have a, an acute respiratory distress. Uh, I should say the differential diagnosis in a case like this can be the spectrum of uh, a uh, kennel cough, uh, including the canine influenza virus, um, and can also be um, a, a lower bacterial infection that could be secondary. It could even be fungal. We'll learn more with the uh, bacterial culture later, um, but in the meantime, a cytal combination, very old dog, uh, probably the immune system isn't working as well as it might, and a combination that covers gram positives, gram negatives, and has a synergistic uh, combination as well. Could be dealing with a fungal infection, uh, seems less likely. However, that is something that has to be kept in mind.